here then we see a sphere that has specular reflection rather than diffuse reflection that we saw before and this of course is commonly what we think of when we think of the term or the word reflection something that is actually reflective in this mirror sense so quite differently from diffuse this is what specular reflection looks like rays are emitted from a light they hit a surface and they bounce clean off it in a perfect reflection where of course the angle at which they bounce off is equal to the angle at which they struck the surface either side of a normal line which in this case would be pointing straight up of course now, of course, something that we've been used to in Lightwave, as well as other renderers for many years, is having separate settings for specular and reflection, as we can see here. Why is this? Well, as we saw when we talked about how ray tracing works, and of course we talked about how blurred reflections are calculated, calculating soft blurred reflection is a computationally intensive thing to do. It takes time to render, and of course a great many things that we encounter do not have these perfect mirror-like speculars. They have rough speculars. Think of wood, think of plastic, think of rubber. Furthermore, even in cases where we are talking about things that are specular, they have reflection, it's not always that strong. It might be, you know, quite weak reflection. But what you get is where you have a light source, you still have a very bright highlight coming off of the surface. Again, there's a sort of equivalence here, just like we saw with diffuse. If you have a very low diffuse value, but you have a very bright light, then you get a bright lit object irrespective. And the same is true in specular. You can have a very low specular value or very low reflectance but if you have a very bright light that will still create a very bright specular hit as such the old specular value that we've been used to for years was always a cheat it was never a true ray traced reflection specular it was a very simple model that only accounted for the specular hits that we would get from actual bright light sources it could provide none of this additional mirror style reflection it only did specular highlight hits like this the advantage of this was that it rendered very fast and it could also be blurred and softened to give these softer style bright specular hits like that and to do so without requiring much computation time it was in short a cheat it was a fudge having separate values for specular and reflection was nothing more than a reflection of the fact that computers were slow. In reality, there is no difference between specularity and reflection, or that which we've been used to calling reflection. Specularity is just one type of reflection in the same way that diffuse is a type of reflection. Now, when I say that computers were slow, these fake specular hit models date from the early 1970s. They are older than I am. Remember what computer graphics looked like in the 1970s? They looked like POM. Remember what they looked like in the 1980s? They looked like Pac-Man or Tron, if we were talking the absolute cutting edge. Computers are a good bit faster now. It is time to move on. And as such, what you will find now in Lightwave is that there is no distinction between specularity and reflection. There's just specular reflection. So you see here, I have this reflection parameter that gives me a reflection. And I also have this specular parameter that gives me a fully ray traced reflection. There is no longer any cheap fake specular. And all of our speculars, when they are blurred, are fully ray traced blurred specular reflection like this. Given this fact, you may wonder why do we still have these two values here? Well, this is in the standard material, which provides something of a throwback to earlier versions of Lightwave, which of course you might be bringing materials over from to try and make that transition a little bit more straightforward. But if we look at other materials, all of the PBR materials that we have, none of them have a reflection value. They only have specular. That's all we get in any of these materials now is a specular value and a roughness or a glossiness value to account for the softening of any such specular reflection. There are other things that we can do with speculars to 
speed them up and only make them account for certain things like lights or fully ray traced and we have that with the glossy options here but we'll look at that in more detail once we actually come on to surface properties. Now different types of surfaces will exhibit different types of specular reflection. The amount of specular might vary across their surface and also there may be colour in the reflections themselves or there may be no colour and the overall item might be a mixture of diffuse and specular. Many, many common materials that we're used to have a mixture of diffuse and specular. How all of that works out really depends upon the material type that is under consideration and what we'll see for the most part is that there are generally two main material types that we will be dealing with and we'll come to a discussion of those in a future video.